Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about finding market equilibrium in a perfectly competitive market. So there's actually a lot to say here and in this video I'm only going to concentrate on the algebra. So I know that there's other things like drawing the uh, diagram right so you, you can get kind of full points in your, in your exam. But here I'm just going to uh, try and communicate some good ways to think about the algebra so you don't get mixed up. Okay, good. So the particular uh, example that I'm going to be looking at today uh, is just two simple demand and supply equations. So Q subscript D is equal to 18 minus 3P and Q subscript S is equal to 2 plus P. Okay, well, what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, I'm actually, I am going to draw a diagram, just not this diagram, but a general demand and supply diagram. So you would have seen these in class. We have two axes quantity on the horizontal, price on the vertical. We have an upward sloping curve and a downward sloping curve. Our downward sloping curve is our demand curve and our upward sloping curve is our supply curve. Now the point of equilibrium, that point we want to solve for, that occurs at the intersection of these two curves. Okay, And we call the price associated with that intersection P star and the quantity associated with that intersection, Q star. So that's our price and quantity in equilibrium. So let's just think a little bit more about what these curves are doing. They're actually telling us what the quantity supplied or demand is going to be for various prices. So for instance, let's think about the demand curve. Let's say that price was P1. Well, in the market, we would get the demand uh, right here, Q subscript D1. If we were going to lower the price, we would get something like P2, for instance, we, our quantity demand would increase, right? Q subscript D. So the demand curve is just a line that tells us for all the different prices, what's the difference quantity demanded. And what is the supply curve doing at this point as well? So let's not think about P2, but just P1. And we extend our line across until it hits the supply curve. And it's this point here that gives us this quantity supplied one. But you can see here at P1, at this price, the quantity supplied is much bigger than the quantity demanded. And we call this situation excess supply. So what's going to happen when we have excess supply is that, well, there's going to be this downward pressure on the price. There's going to be lots of uh, stock left on the shelves because you know, if it was, it was just too expensive and people just didn't want to buy the product. So our suppliers, they're going to lower the price. And as they lower the price, more people who otherwise wouldn't have uh, bought, bought the product, and they, they're going to come into the market. And really this downward pressure is going to continue until it's the case that there is no more excess supply left and we're at that equilibrium point P star and Q star. Now let's think about the opposite situation. Say I had some price that was lower than P star. Let's just call it P2. Well, let's find out what's been demanded and supplied at P2. So I'm going to extend my line of price along and see where that, uh, that line hits the demand curve. Well, it's about here. And we get Q subscript D2. And how about the supply? Well, the supply curve hits that price about here. So we get Q subscript S2. Now here is like the opposite of what we had before. Here our quantity demanded is more than our quantity supplied. So we have excess demand or shortages. And so what will happen uh, with these excess demand and shortages is that there's going to be an upward pressure on the price as the buyers compete for the product. And the sellers recognizing that there is a shortage in the market is going to think, okay, well we can increase the price for this product. And that upward pressure is going to continue until, again, there is no excess demand or shortages left in the market and our quantity demanded is equal to our quantity supplied. And this is really the key here is that this equilibrium position, well, this only obtains when our quantity demanded is equal to our quantity supplied. And you can see intuitively with the story about excess supply and excess demand about why that's the case. But that's great because this helps us with our algebra because we have expressions for our quantity demanded and we have expressions for our quantity supplied. We know that our quantity demanded, Q subscript D, is equal to 18 minus 3P. And we know that our quantity supplied is equal to 2 plus P. 
but if quantity demanded must equal quantity supplied in equilibrium, then it must be the case that 18 minus 3p must equal 2 plus p in equilibrium as well. So that's our first step in solving for equilibrium in our perfectly competitive market. We have to set quantity supplied equal to quantity demanded. And so we get 18 minus 3p is equal to 2 plus p. What we're going to do now is now we're going to solve for p. And once we solve for p, we're going to get that equilibrium price, that price that obtains when it's the case that our quantity demanded is equal to our quantity supplied. So let's go ahead and do the algebra so we can solve for p here. So I'm going to get rid of the 2 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to minus 2 from both the left and the right-hand side. So I get 18 minus 3p minus 2 is equal to 2 plus p minus 2. The 2 and the negative 2 on the right-hand side, that will cancel out. And 18 minus 2 is 16, so I'm left with 16 minus 3p is equal to p. So I'm going to plus 3p to both sides now. And I get 16 minus 3p plus 3p is equal to p, plus 3p. The minus 3p and the plus 3p, they're going to cancel out. And I'm left with 16 is equal to, well, p plus 3p is 4p. I can divide both sides by 4. And that leads us to our answer, which is p star is equal to 4. Okay, that's good. We've got our equilibrium price. We're halfway there. Now, once I've solved for equilibrium price, I'm going to substitute that price, p is equal to 4, into either our, our demand or our supply curves. So that's our step 2. Now, I can substitute p is equal to 4 into either our demand or supply because it's the case that at that equilibrium point, they're equal to one another, so it doesn't matter which one I substitute this p is equal to 4 into. If I can prove that to you, I'm going to substitute them into both, and we should get the same answer back. So let's work with our demand first. Well, if p was equal to 4, then quantity demanded is equal to 18 minus 3 times 4, which is 18 minus 12, which is equal to 6. How about our supply curve? Well, our quantity supplied is 2 plus p, and p is equal to 4, so we get quantity supplied is equal to 6. So our q star is equal to 6. So we found our equilibrium points, p star and q star. And these are the points where our quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. So that's really good that we got that, that solution. And so I hope that you can remember to follow those steps. Just set q, q subscript s equal to q subscript d, solve for one of the variables, solve for p, and then plug that back into your supply or demand curve. I hope also you understand why it's the case that we need this QD is equal to QS. So there's so much more to say here, and uh, so hopefully I'll be able to do more videos in the future that um, kind of addresses other aspects of equilibrium in perfect competition. So if you liked this video and it helped you, please like and subscribe for more economics and maths help. Uh, you can leave any comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a really great day.